Good morning and Jai Hind children. I welcome you all in today's live class of chemistry. And today I am going to revise the chapter animal fibers. Children remember that we have done this chapter in the month of April. Is it? So as it is the part of your half yearly exam. So once again I am going to revise this overall chapter. And in the chapter we have studied about the different types of fiber that we obtain from certain animals. Is it? So, as you know that long ago human beings used leaves, barks of trees and the skins of animals to cover their bodies. Okay? And the cloths that we use, these cloths protect us from heat, cold, rain, dust, and insects okay now as the climate we used to wear the different types of cloth according to the climate like in summer season we used to wear loose light colored cotton cloths okay because the cotton cloths yes make us comfortable during the summer season it allowed to pass the air through the cotton cloths. Okay children? Now, in winter season, we used to wear thick dark colored cloths which are made up of wool, fur or leather. Okay? Because these materials does not allow to escape the body heat and keep our body warm. That is why we used to wear the cloths which are made up of wool, fur or leather in winter season. And in rainy season, we usually wear cotton cloths. Okay. And these cotton cloths allow to circulate the air and absorb the sweat. In rainy season, we also use raincoats, umbrellas and gumboots. Okay children, because they protect us from rain. Now, the different types of fiber that we are using, we can categorize them in different categories. So, you can look here that the types of fiber can be categorized mainly in two groups. The first group is Natural fibers. Alright children. And the second group of fibers are synthetic fiber. As the natural fibers, the name indicate the fibers which we obtain from natural sources like plants and animals. Okay. So such kind of fibers are known as natural fibers and the synthetic fibers are man-made fibers which are made up from certain chemicals. Got it children? So such fibers are known as synthetic fibers and the example of synthetic fibers are nylon, polyester, etc. So these are some of the names of synthetic fibers. Got it children? Now come to the natural fibers. As I told that the natural fibers are obtained from natural sources like plants and animals. So we can categorize the natural fibers again in two groups. The first kind of natural fiber is plant fibers. Okay, and the second kind of natural fiber is animal fibers. All right children, the plant fibers are those fibers which we obtain from certain plants from their different parts like leaf, stem, etc. So such all fibers are known as plant fibers. And children remember that in previous class you have studied in detail about the different types of plant fibers. Okay. And the name of some plant fibers are Cotton, 
जू फ्लैक्स एक्सेट्रा दीज आर द नेम ऑफ सम प्लांट फाइबर्स ऑल राइट नाउ द एनिमल फाइबर्स द फाइबर्स विच वी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम सर्टेन एनिमल्स फ्रॉम द हेयर्स सो सच फाइबर्स आर नोन एज एनिमल फाइबर्स एंड मेनली we have the two types of animal fibers that is wool and silk so these two are the animal fibers because these fibers are obtained from certain animals wool is obtained from the hairs of different animals like sheep rabbit llama camel etc and the silk is obtained from the silk worm got it children so this one is a different types of fibers okay now we will study in detail about the wool fiber and silk fiber in this chapter got it so come to the first that is wool fiber children the wool fibers they comes mainly from flesh flesh is the term used for the hairs of certain animals okay so this fiber comes mainly from the hairs or flesh of sheep and also from goat rabbit camel and yak got it now these wool fibers have large air spaces between them and these large air spaces traps lot of air and because of that yes they prevent the body heat to escape and we feel warm now the fleece are the hairs of sheep consist of two types of fibers got it children and the names of those two types of fibers of the fleece or hair of sheep is the first one is coarse beard hair and the second one is fine and soft under hair got it children so these are the two types of fleece or hairs of the sheep which we obtain after cutting down the hairs from the body the first one coarse beard here they are rough they are not so soft and the fine and soft under hair they are mainly used to make the wool fibers which are used to make woolen cloths got it now the wool fibers as you know that protect us from yes protect us from the winter from the cold because they have this large air spaces and those air spaces make a shield above our body and does not allow to escape the body heat got it children now we will study the different types of wool fibers which we obtain from different types of animals got it children so come to the different types of wool fibers and the first type of wool fiber is sheep wool fibers they are used in large scale and they are obtained in large scale from the sheep get it and the different varieties of the sheep are used to obtain the wool fibers okay in different countries the different varieties are different species of wool sheep is reared and they are used to obtain the wool fibers and one more thing children the different species provide the different qualities of the wool fibers some species of the sheep provide the rough 
and yes coarse hair some provides the soft hair so on the basis of the qualities of that wool fibers they are used to make the different items got it now the second type of wool fiber is that fibers we obtain from camel family so that animals of camel family wool fibers all right children these are the wool fibers which we obtain from animals of camel family camel family animals means the animals which looks like the camel so camel is one of the animal and alpaca llama these are also the animals which are having the similar characteristic feature as the camel and found in different countries so these animals are also used to obtain the wools and such wool is termed as the wool fiber of camel family animals all right children so these are the two types of wool fibers now after that the third type of wool fiber is kashmiri wool fibers children these kashmiri wool fibers are obtained from a kind of goat and the name of that goat is kashmiri goat these goats are mainly found in hilly areas of tibet and ladakh and himalayan region got it the hairs are the fibers of these kashmiri goat are very soft and lightweight so that is why it is mostly used to make the woolen cloths understood now the fourth one is angora wool fibers all right children the angora wool fibers as the name indicate it is obtained from a kind of rabbit and the name of that rabbit is angora rabbit okay so that name of the wool fiber is angora fibers it is also very soft and yes light in weight and fluffy also so mostly they are used to make the woolen shawls okay woolen garments etc the fifth kind of wool fiber is mohair wool fiber this mohair wool fibers are obtained from a kind of goat which is mainly found in himalayan region and that goat is angora goat the name of such goat is angora goat so children don't confused here that name of the fiber angora wool fiber but it is not obtained from angora goat it is obtained from angora rabbit and the mohair wool fiber it is obtained from angora goat get it so this uh, mohair wool fiber is also uh, very soft and good quality wool fibers which is used to make the woolen garments okay now the last kind of wool fiber is yak wool fibers the yak the hairs of the yak are also used to make the wool and this wool keeps so warm because that wool fibers are thick okay and because of that they keep the body warm but it is not as soft as the kashmiri fiber angora fiber and mohair fiber so mainly it is used to make the carpets blankets etc got it children so these are the different types of wool fibers which are used to make the different kind of woolen materials woolen cloths all right now come to that the steps which are involved to obtain wool from the hair of these animals okay so certain steps are involved to obtain the wool from the hairs so one by one we will discuss about that
steps involved to obtain wool from hair. All right, children. So the first step in this process is. Rearing. Children, the rearing is a method, rearing is a step or process in which the animals from which we obtain the wolves, they are get managed. Their breeding, feeding and caring of these all wool yielding animals comes under the rearing. Okay, so th in this process, we are going to manage the wool yielding animals. Okay how they breed, how we can care them, how we can protect them from different environmental condition and providing them the suitable nutrients so we can obtain the wool fibers from them. So this process is known as rearing. Got it? Now the second step is shearing. Children, the shearing is a process in which when the hairs of wool yielding animals get increased, so they need to cut, okay, by using certain machines like scissors or shearing machines are also available. So this removal of hair from a sheep is simply known as shearing, get it, the shearing process, okay. So, it is the removal of hair from a sheep or other wool yielding animal. Now, after the shearing, the third step is scouring. And in this scouring step, the removed hair are get collected and the dust, dirt and the grease, they all are get removed from that hairs of the animals. Get it? And this removal of dust, dirt and grease occurs after dipping the, yes, collected hairs into the soap solution in large tanks. Get it? And after some time, they get washed properly and get dry. So all the dust, dirt and grease get removed out from the hairs of animals. And this process is known as scouring. What is children? The scouring. So the first process is, yes, rearing. Second process is shearing. After that, scouring. Now after the scouring, the fourth step is sorting. In this sorting step, the hairs get separated on the basis of their different texture. Okay, like texture, long size, small size, okay, and soft, bare. So on the basis of different texture, the hairs get separated in different bundles. So this process of separation of the hairs on the basis of their texture, such as length, shine, etc., is known as shorting. Alright, children? Now come to the next. The fifth step is removal of burrs. Removing birds. Children, the birds are the small, soft, fluffy fibers in the wool. And they are not used to, yes, meat or the women in the weaving machine. So they need to remove them. And this removal is known as removing birds. And such soft, fluffy fibers, which are very small in size, are known as birds. So birds need to remove from the wool fibers. Okay? Now, the next sixth step is dyeing. Okay? So, after removing the birds from wool fibers, it need to color them in different colors as per the demand of market. 
okay and this coloring of the wool fiber is simply known as dye and when the wool fibers get dyed in different colors they get dry after that the yarns are made so the next step is making yarns Got it, children? When the wool fibers get dyed in different colors, so such fibers get straightened, combed, and spinned into the wool fibers into yarns. And this process of straightening, combing, and spinning of wool fibers into yarn is known as making yarns. Okay. Now these yarns are used to make the woolen garments. Either for knitting purpose or for in woolen knitting machine, it can be used to make the woolen material. All right, children. So this is all about the wool, the different uh, steps which are involved in it, different kind of wool fibers which we obtain from different animals, and all. Okay, so I hope that you understood about the wool fibers. Now come to the next second kind of fiber is silk fiber all right So the second kind of animal fiber is the silk fiber, children. Children, the silk fiber or silk yarns is made from the thread like filament that a silk worm spins around itself to form its cocoon. All right. And this silk yarn or silk fiber is costly because of its natural lustrous appearance. It's having the shiny appearance and that is why it is costly okay and the silk fiber is also a good insulator therefore it does not conduct heat and keep a person warm in winter and cool in summer so in both the season the silk fiber can be used the cloths which are made from silk fiber can be used in both the season all right children now as you know that the silk fibers are obtained from the cocoon of silk moth. So the life cycle of a silk moth is very important that you must have to know. Life cycle of a silk moth. It contains four different stages. You got it children? In that first one, the silk moth lay the eggs. Okay, so the eggs are the first step in the life cycle of a silk moth. After some days, when the eggs get mature, it get hatched. And after hatching, a small thread-like larva comes out from the eggs. Okay. So, the larvas of the silk moth is also known as caterpillar. Got it children? So, the second step is larva or caterpillar. Alright? Now, this larva grows continuously because they used to eat the leaves of mulberry plant continuously 24 hours and get increased in size after few days. Got children? And during these growth of the body, they remove their skin two to three times. Okay? And increased in size. After the mature, when that larva get mature or increased in size, they stop feeding and they spin 
the cocoon around their body they release a sticky fluid from their mouth and that sticky fluid is used to wrap their body and makes a white ball like structure and that ball like structure is known as yes cocoon inside the cocoon the larva is going to change their body and get converted into the third stage of their life that is pupa so pupa is the third stage of life cycle of a silk moth get it children and this pupa gets changed under the cocoon and cocoon is a white ball like structure which are made from the yes the fluid released from the larvas okay now when the pupa get mature inside the cocoon they break the cocoon and comes out as a baby moth and the baby moth get adult moth and again these adult moth lay the eggs then larva then pupa and they get adult so this one is the life cycle of a silk moth in which four stages are there egg larva pupa and adult moth got it children understood this is the natural life cycle of a silk moth but when we are going to obtain the silk fibers so these cocoons are used to get the silk fibers get it so when the cocoon form they get dipped in hot boiling water the larva inside it get killed and the fine thread of silk get separated out got it children now after the life cycle of a silk moth we will study about yes the method or the process by which silk fibers are obtained from the silk moth and this practice to obtain silk fiber from silk moth is known as sericulture what it is known as children sericulture so you must have to know that the practice to obtain the silk from silk moth is known as sericulture okay so the breeding and the management of silk worm for the production of silk is known as sericulture all right now there are different types of silk children like tassar silk moonga silk and kosa silk these are some varieties or types of silk and they are produced from the cocoons of different varieties of silk moths okay so you can see that the different varieties of silk moth gives the different kind of silk fibers get it now the different steps which are involved in sericulture is the first one incubation this is the step in which the eggs of silk moth get collected and providing them the proper temperature for hatching okay so this is step of providing the eggs the proper temperature or warming the eggs of silk moth to a temperature which is suitable for hatching is known as incubation all right now the second step is boiling when the eggs get hatch larva comes that larva grows in size and forms the cocoon and then these cocoons get collected and boiled in hot water so this step is known as boiling all right children so in boiling process what happens the killing of insects inside the cocoon by the heat by boiling water is known as boiling and the third step is reeling or yes filature so reeling or filature is the third step and in this step 
twisting the filaments of many cocoons to make a thread of raw silk takes place and that is why this step is known as reeling all right children so these are the different steps which are involved in sericulture to obtain silk fiber from silk moth or from cocoon of silk moth got it now children at the last of the chapter there are certain health hazards which are found in those workers who are working in wool industry and silk industry okay so these are some health problems found in the workers of wool industry and silk industry and the first health problem is a disease which is known as shorter's disease so children the shorter disease it is a fatal blood disease which are caused by a bacteria and the name of that bacteria is anthrax bacteria okay and this shortest disease are mainly found in the workers who are working in wool industry all right now the second health problem is respiratory diseases the diseases related to our respiratory system are those who affect our respiratory system and this occur mainly because of inhalation of vapors which arising from steaming of cocoons all right and this produces the breathing problems like asthma and other bronchial diseases in this is mainly our respiratory system get affected all the children and mainly it is found in the workers who are working in silk industry got it and the third health problem is scabies it is a kind of disease so scabies and other skin disease infections these health problems are also found in the workers who are working in silk industry children this scabies is the name of the disease of skin and this occurs due to the constant dipping of hands in boiling water and the skin becomes raw and blistered and which results the peeling of the skin so this is known as scabies and other kind of skin infections so mainly they are occur in silk the workers of silk industry all right so children this is all about the revision of the chapter animal fibers and i hope that you understood these all topics of the chapter if you have still any doubt in any part of the chapter or any topic of the chapter so you can send your query your question in school group okay Thank you and have a nice day children